Madeline's a very complicated character. I, I jokingly called her the mother from hell, but which I guess she is, depending on... Well, to Michael, she is. And to my youngest son, Nate, who I always protect, you know, he's still sort of mama's boy. Um, uh, she's a chain-smoking hypochondriac who um, is actually very smart. Uh, they decided that's where Michael got his moxie. His smarts was from her. Um, but there's a clash. You know, they haven't seen each other in 10 years. Now they're together. He's stuck here in the last place he ever wanted to be because that's where his mother and his brother are. Um, but it's fun. We just rehearsed a scene, our first family scene uh, that we're going to shoot tomorrow. And the dynamic was amazing. The fireworks were just going off. It was great. I didn't know that they'd actually bring Nate alive. Nate was someone we talked about. You know, he was just sort of a mess and um, kind of a loser. And I always thought he was someone we did, but they cast this wonderful boy, a young man, to play the role. So, so now Michael, played by Jeffrey Donovan, brilliantly played by Jeffrey, um, now has this whole built-in family. The dynamic between them is fraught. Um, and it will all unfold as to the reasons why. And it's be fascinating to me, and I'm sure Michael must feel the same way, to see how if they ever resolve their differences, I think you'd, that piece of the show wouldn't be very interesting if they did. Do you know? I am who I am, and he is who he is, and we're both strong. I've never seen a show like this before. Um, it's not really a spy show. I mean, it's a burn notice is a term used by CIA operatives, apparently when somebody's cut off. You probably know all of this. You've heard all this. It's someone who's been cut off. They don't exist anymore. Their bank account is wiped off. They, they, they're they dead, even though they're alive. Uh, nobody returns their phone calls, even his best friend. Nobody accepts the fact that he is alive. He ends up, you'll see on the show, how he ends up in Miami. Um, it was the last place he ever wants to be. And he has to uh, find a way to make a living. And with his skills, which are superb, uh, he takes these, you know little jobs, little PI jobs that are really beneath him and you discover that this man has this amazing heart, even with the rough work he does. So he ends up giving some of his money away and um, what's fun, it would, anyway, when he's doing all these these jobs that are menial to what his background is, uh, he uses his special skills. Like he can take off a half of a building without any noise, <laughs> he literally can, soundlessly, I don't know how they do all this, but he does it. And, and uh, Jeffrey Donovan narrates it. So he narrates to the audience, you can see him, terrible things happening to him, and he narrates to the audience in a very funny way, how to be a spy. <laughs> I mean, but it's all, that's part is tongue in cheek, because what you're seeing is a lot rougher than how he's narrating it. And it's a wonderful, serious, funny conflict. And he doesn't show, he's not a character that shows his feelings readily. Um, Michael is not. Except, you see this heart of gold when he starts giving the money away, you know, you're helping people who need help. Um, it's fun to play opposite a character of that, like that, because my character is kind of screwed up. <clears throat> and he's very solid. And uh, it's it's just it's, it's just a great dynamic to to have those two. Now? I think she's been influencing him all his life. <clears throat> That's where they comes in. Um, but he didn't buy it. I think he left home early. When he appears in the pilot, when he comes back, they haven't seen each other in ten years. And she said, "You missed your father's funeral by eight years." There's a lot of there's a lot of pain underneath the humor. You know, it's a, Jeffrey said, he said, doing these scenes with you is so spooky. He said, because this is so much like my family. <laughs> and I said, oh, wow. Okay, he said, no, but it's interesting. It's, 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 it's alive and it's, it's, and it's wonderfully written. We smoke. When my husband read, you play a chain smoker, he said, how happy are you? Um, <laughs> um, I'm not a hypochondriac at all. Um, I'm very healthy, but so is Madeline. She just wants the attention. I'm not a needy person. Um, well, 
sometimes if I do a scene, I'll say, it's all right. Um, but I'm really not basically a needy person. She's very needy because she's done everything herself. And with this, when this strength comes back into her life in the form of Michael, um, she wants a piece, you know. But he puts her in her place. So it, it, and I've never played a character like that. I mean, Chris Cagney was, certainly was a complicated, confused cop. I've done a lot of series. I think this is like my 10th or 11th. And I've never been handed a role like this. It's, it's really fun to play. And he can break my heart, you know, he can get me angry, but he can, he can kill me too. It's that great dynamic. When I did the pilot, I wore a wig. I thought that she was a woman of a considerable age who wanted to look younger than her years because she's lonely and doesn't have a lot to do, so she paints her nails. And, um, and they, the network decided they didn't want a wig. They wanted my own hair. And, but my own hair was, I thought a little, the color and everything was just a little too chic with the sun streaks and all of that. And I said, this is a woman who lives in Miami and I want to do that one dunk color blonde. And it was, it, it was a fight that they finally said, okay. And I went through four attempts at it. And finally today, I'm looking over at Roe, my hairdresser. <laughs> um, somebody came and finally came up with the right color platinum blonde from, from Madeline. And I, I felt very strongly about about her hair. It just sort of says a lot about her.